was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. We all know the rest of the story, don't we? Isn't it interesting, however, that this line from a Christmas Eve story is more recognizable to the world than the good news of God's gift that the angels brought to the shepherd on that cold winter night. What we know, or at least believe, happened that night is found largely in the hymns that we sing. A little town of Bethlehem, silent night, away in the manger, angels we have heard on high. Of course, we really don't know for sure that Jesus was born on a cold winter night. There's no real record of his birth beyond the gospel stories we find in Matthew and Luke. And even they don't provide us any conclusive evidence of exactly when this event in history took place. But the fact that we have no written record of the exact day or hour of his birth is not really all that important. Until more recent history, unless you were born into a family of wealth or status, you didn't really matter. And the only record of your birth may have been a family record, finally Bible. Still, there's one thing we can be sure of, and that is Jesus was born. Make no mistake, historians tell us that a child born in Israel grew up to be the man we know to be Jesus. This man went throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside preaching a message of repentance and reconciliation. And as a result, he was crucified by the authorities for what many saw as an attempt to undermine the political and religious powers of that day. There are some today who, like the authorities then, would have us believe that's all Jesus was. That he was a man who went about the countryside causing trouble. And sure enough, he did cause trouble. He was not afraid to point out our human weaknesses. Nor was he afraid to tell those weaknesses how those weaknesses separated us from God and one another. He was a man who called it as he saw it. If a man like that were to walk among us today... Oh, would the pundits have fun with him. While the pundits like to tell us what is right or wrong about different political candidates or issues, to have someone stand up and tell them that they have got it all wrong, wouldn't that be a sight to behold? Of course, there would be attacks from both sides. As both extremes would attempt to demonize the the solitary individual who dares to stand up against them and tell them the way it really is. Maybe things haven't changed all that much in 2,000 years. Neither government nor religion tolerates discontent very well. Maybe that's why we struggle so much with the reason for the season. You've all heard that Christian cliche. Never forget. Jesus is the reason for the season. It has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? And there is a historical basis to it. Christmas Eve did begin with what they call Christ's Mass. A time to celebrate when God came among us to show us the way to look beyond ourselves and our troubles so that we might find hope in Him. Hope offered to each of us in the birth of a baby boy. Now there's a lot of speculation as to why December 25th was picked for this celebration. And one of the more credible is that this date originally was a pagan holiday, a pagan celebration of new life following the winter solstice. And if Jesus is to be new and ever brightening light in the world, when better would it be for God to reveal such a light than after the darkest days of the year. 
Over the years, the season has taken on new emphasis. With the added celebration of the life of St. Nicholas, the Bishop of Smyrna, who secretly gave gifts to the children in his town. When this celebration began, it, it was much earlier in the month, and the gifts of hope he gave, and later the gifts that were exchanged, soon became associated with the greatest gift of hope ever given to us in Jesus Christ. From a Christian perspective, the seasonal celebration moved from happy birthday baby Jesus to a season of hopefulness and anticipation. This makes sense. We were told that with the birth of Jesus, God came among us and made himself known in the ordinary so that we might better see the possibilities and opportunities that surround us. Knowing and seeing for ourselves that there is something beyond the chaos that, that so often overwhelms us enables each of us to have hope. Hope where we, before we had none. When we have hope, we no longer seek the unattainable. Instead, we experience the possible. That's why, as a community of faith, we gather together during this time of year so that we can share in the experience of what is possible when God is with us, acting in and through the ordinary. In the story of Jesus' birth, we are reminded that when our eyes and our hearts are open to seeing where God walks among us, we see that everyday things and everyday events are truly gifts from God to be cherished. Instead of feeling the hopelessness of chaos, we experience the order of grace. And we see that we have not been abandoned, but that we have been embraced, and for no other reason than we are loved. This Christmas, let each of us share that gift of love we have come to know, so that others may know the joy that we know. Joy found in the humble birth of a baby boy so long ago. A birth proclaimed by the angels who said to the shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord.